Hello and welcome to today's video which is on mutually exclusive events. So, mutually exclusive events are part of probability and it's worth understanding what a mutually exclusive event is. So a mutually exclusive event are two things that can't happen at the same time. So for example, you can't roll a 1 and a 2 at the same time on the dice. If I was on my chair, I can't stand on the chair and uh, stand on the floor at the same time. So these two things can't happen. Now I'm not talking about leaning on the chair, I'm talking about two things that absolutely can't happen at the same time. And I'm not talking about if the dice kind of lands on its side. You, when you roll a dice, it's either one, or it's two, or it's three, or it's four, or it's five, or it's six. So all these events are called mutually exclusive events because they can't happen together. You can't get a one and two, it's either one or it's two. So, the next thing you need to know is that the probability of everything happening, of all these mutually exclusive events happening, sums to 1. Okay, That's really important. If something is certain, it's 1. But we can also use that information to, um, to work out other probabilities. And that's what we're going to be starting with here, something quite simple. So um, this one here is example 1. Do make sure you're getting these notes down in your book. So example 1. The probability that Sandra's bus is on time is 0 0.4. Work out the probability that Sandra's bus is late. So, we're going to be using the fact that this, these two things are mutually exclusive and the fact that they sum to 1 to work this out. So we know that the bus can't be late and on time at the same time. It's either late or it's on time and that's why these two events are mutually exclusive. We also know the probability of the both things happening sums to 1. So to work out the probability that Sandra's bus is late, it needs to be 1 take away the probability that it's on time. So in this case, it's equal to 0 0.4. So 1 take away 0 0.4, which is equal to 1 take away 0 0.4, which is equal to, I mean, you probably could have done that in your head, but that's equal to 0 0.6. So the probability, we're going to be using our notation now. So the probability that Sandra's bus is late is equal to 0 0.6. So that there's example one. So that one's done. So let's move on to the next one. So we've got two examples here. I'm going to do one of them. I'm going to get you to do the second one. So Lottie plays basketball. The probability of the outcomes for a forthcoming match are summarised in the table below. Now this comes up quite a lot like this, where they give you a mutually exclusive event in a table. So she got win, which is 0 0.1, draw, which is 0 0.6, and lose. Work out the probability that her team loses the match. So this here is example two. Now we know that the probability of all of these th things happening sums to one. So to work out the probability of losing, it's going to be, we've got to work out what the other ones added together. So the probability of her losing is equal to, 1 minus all the other probabilities, and in this case, minus, the only two we've got are equal to 0 0.1 and 0 0.6. So it's 1 minus 0 0.1 and 0 0.6, which is 0 0.7, I'll do it anyway, 1 minus 0 0.7, which is equal to 0 0.3. So the probability that she loses is equal to 0 0.3. Now, we can actually check this, and we can check this by adding all of these probabilities together, because we know that they should sum to 1. So that's equal to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3. Well, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.6 is 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3 is equal to 1, which gives me the um, which gives me everything, okay? So, pause now and have a little go with that one on yourself on the right. I know it might be quite straightforward, but do make sure you're checking your, checking your understanding. So pause now and have a little go at that. Brilliant, so this one here is example three. So with example three, we know that all of these probabilities are gonna go sum to one, so it needs to be the probability of getting four was equal to one minus all of these probabilities added together. So it's equal to 0 0.3 plus 0.15 plus another 0 0.15 plus 0 0.2. So we add all those together, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.2, which is equal to 
0.8, so it's 1 minus 0.8, which is all the other probabilities, which is equal to 0.2. So the probability of getting a 4 is equal to 0.2. Super. Okay, so let's take it on to the next step. Okay, let's take it on to the next level. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is something like this. So the probability that Tim Tom's team wins a football match is 0.2. But they are twice as likely to draw. Um, they are twice as likely to draw. Find the probability that the tier, that Tom's team loses their match. So this one here is taking it just a little bit further now. So we've got three different options here for Tom. So this one here is example four. Yeah, example four. Now, the options that Tom has got are that he either... Now, they haven't wrote it in a table. I'm going to do it in kind of a table form. That he wins, that he draws, or that he loses. Okay, these are the different options that he's got. We already know the probability that he wins is equal to 0 0.2. Okay? And it says they are twice as likely to draw. Okay, so we can work out now what the probability of his of him drawing is, because it's twice as likely that he that, that he wins. So we know that this is equal to 0 0.4. Okay, so then what's the probability that he loses? Well, the probability he loses is going to be one take away both of these, which is going to be one take away 0 0.6 in this case, which is equal to 0 0.4 as well. Brilliant. We had we check that this is right. Well, we add these together. Do they sum to one? Yes, they do. Let's just make it really clear to the examiner that I know what I'm talking about. The probability that he loses is equal to 0.4. Brilliant. Now, what we're doing here is we're starting to build up equations or build up different parts that we need to bring together, and that's what makes this a little bit trickier. We're we'll going to be looking at that again in a second. So, with this one here, let's just check 0.4. Brilliant. Okay. So. This next one on the right um, is where people start to struggle with it a little bit more. So th this one here is example five. So, example five. The probability to pick red, yellow and pink counters from a bag are summarised in the table below. So we've got our outcome. Outcome. We've got our probability. And for red, it's equal to x, so I don't actually know what it is. Yellow is equal to 3x, we'll talk about that in a second. And pink is equal to 0.2. Find the probability to pick a red counter. Right, so they've started doing this algebraically, okay? Now, what does 3x mean? Well, 3x means that it's 3 times x, so that means that the probability of yellow is three times more than red. Now that's important when we're looking at the next question, but for now we'll just focus on this one. So, what we're doing here is we're forming an equation and we are solving it. We know that the probability of all of these things happening sums to one. So what I can say is the probability of that plus that plus that is equal to one. Okay, it's all about forming that equation and then solving it. Same as all any of the trickier ones. So it's gonna be x, plus 3x, plus 0.2, so that's all of these added together, and we know the probability of all of these things happening sums to 1. So there I've created an equation. Now, once I've created an equation, we create the equation, we simplify it, and then we go on to solve it. So the first thing I need to do is to simplify this by bringing these x's together. So x plus 3x is equal to 4x, so I end up with 4x plus 0.2, is equal to 1. Then I'm going to go ahead and solve it. So minus 0 0.2, minus 0 0.2. So I end up with 4x is equal to 0 0.8. And then I'm going to divide by 4, divide by 4. So x is equal to 0 0.8 divided by 4, which is equal to 0 0.2 as well. Brilliant. Now we can check that if we put these back in, because this is equal to, x is equal to 0 0.2. Yellow is equal to 3 times that, which is equal to 0 0.6. And do these sum to 1? Well, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6 is 0 0.8. 
plus 0.2 is equal to 1. So yes, this works. So the probability of picking red, probability of picking red is equal to x, which in this case is equal to 0 0.2. So now we're starting to get into the trickier questions. Brilliant. So let's have a look at example um, 6. Now I am going to do this one because there is another one I want you to have a go at next, okay? So, um, a, very similar to the last one, but we've got to start in putting things ourselves now. A bag only has red, white, blue and yellow counters. A counter is taken from the bag at random. The probability of taking a white counter white counter is twice the probability of taking a yellow counter. We need to keep that in our heads, that's important. Complete the table below. So here we've got, um, now there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could either take it away and then work it out. I think it's better to use an equation with this. You could use ratio if you wanted to. I'm going to use a uh, form an equation. So this one here is example six. So we've got our colour and probability. We know it's red, white, blue and yellow. We know the probability of red is equal to 0 0.1, the probability of blue is 0 0.3. Now, I don't know the probability of white or yellow yet, but that's what I'm trying to find out. However, what I do know is that the probability of white is twice the probability of taking a yellow counter. So I'm going to call yellow x, and because I know that the white is twice the amount of yellow, I'm going to call this one 2x. Okay, so very similar to the last one, I know what these are in terms of a, an unknown, so I'm going to form my equation and then I'm going to solve it. So I know that this plus this plus this plus this sums to 1. Notice how I haven't put it in our table because we need to actually find out what those values are. Okay, so it's going to be 0.1 plus 2x plus 0.3 plus x is equal to 1. I'm going to simplify this first. Let's bring together the x's first. So 2x plus x is equal to 3x. And then 0.1 plus 0.3 is equal to plus 0.4, which is equal to 1. Then I'm going to solve this. So the first thing I need to do is minus 0.4 minus 0.4. So that's equal to 3x is equal to 0.6 and then divided by 3 so divided by 3 divided by 3 so x is equal to uh, 0.6 divided by 3 which is equal to 0.2 so if I know that this is equal to x I know that this one here is equal to 0.2 and if this one here is double that so 2x this one here is equal to 0.4 which is double that how can I check well I check by adding all these up so 0.2 plus 0.3 is 0.5, plus 0.4 is 0.9, plus 0.1 is 1, which is exactly what we want. Super. So, um, let's just check those. Brilliant, we've completed the table. 0.4, 0.2 for that one. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. So, this question here is looking at, um, it's actually looking at expected outcomes and mutually exclusive events. Okay, so... It's give, actually given us the probabilities already. So here are the probabilities of red, white, blue, and yellow. And it's asking us to work out and complete the table. Now, to do this, we need to think about expected outcomes. Now, if you need to go back to the other question and have a look at this, then do that. But with this one here, we know that the expected outcomes are equal to the probability times by the amount of times he does the trial. So in this case, my probabilities are there, and the amount of times he does it is 500. So if I wanted the expected white, we know that's equal to the probability of getting white, which is equal to 0 0.4, times by the amount of times he does the experiment, which is 500. So in this case, it's equal to 0 0.4 times by 500, which in this case is equal to 200, so we can fill that in the table. Brilliant. The probability of getting blue, so how many times do I expect to get blue? Notice again that I'm saying expected with this. doesn't mean that I'm actually going to get this amount, but this is what we expect to happen. So expected blue is equal to the probability of blue, which is equal to 0 0.3, times by 
the amount of outcomes, which in this case is equal to 500. So 0 0.3 times by 500, which is equal to 150. Brilliant. And then the yellow, expected yellow, is equal to the probability of yellow, which is equal to 0 0.2 times by 500, so 0 0.2 times by 500, which is equal to 100 in this case. So that there's worth two marks. We're just finding out the expected outcomes using the table that we've seen from mutually exclusive events. Okay, so um, we've actually already done red for us. We could have checked that if we wanted to, 0 0.1 times by 500, which is equal to 50, but that's fine. Okay, one more example, one final example in this. Okay, so a bag has only red, white, and blue Sorry, red, white, blue, and yellow counters. A counter is taken from the bag at random. Here are the um, probabilities. So it says the probabilities, but actually these are actually the these are actually the amount of times that it's come out. This must, this must be an experiment. But anyway, there are five hundred counters in the bag altogether. All the yellow counters are taken out of the bag. Work out the probability of taking a red counter um, at random from the bag now. Give your answers a fraction. So. What it's asking you to do is just asking you to find out the probability after something's happened, or so after I've taken away something. But here we've got to consider the fact that we've got to take away it from the yellow as well. So work out the probability of taking a red. So working out after I've taken out the yellow. But also I've got to take that away from the total as well. So this is the last little example on this. This one here is example 7. If I'm honest, I think this is a little bit easier than some of the ones we've just done. So here... So what's the amount of red after the yellow has been taken out? Well, the amount of red is equal to 50. Brilliant. Okay. And the amount of yellow is equal to 100. So the first thing I need to work out is the amount of the total number after yellow has been taken out. So that's going to be equal to 500 take away 100, which is equal to 400. So in this case, it's just going to be the 50 which are left over the 400. They're quite straightforward, actually. So the probability of red is equal to 50 over 400, which is equal to, let's, let's simplify it down, which is equal to 1 over 8. Brilliant. Okay, so to check that answer, 1 over 8, perfect. Nice and straightforward, that one. Well, I want to focus on those ones that we were looking at before where we were forming the equations. They're the better ones, actually. So let's have a go at some questions now. Now, I've got two sheets here for you to have a look at. So pause and make sure you're having a go at both of these sheets. I'll make it big for you. So pause now and have a little go at that. Okay, let's have a look at the next worksheet. So pause now and have a go at those. Some brilliant questions on there. Majority of them are past paper. Okay, so we're going to put the answers for all of those up. So mark those in green. Super. So thank you for watching this video on mutually exclusive events. Remember to make sure you're having a go at these questions because the only way to learn maths is to do it and have a lovely day. Mm -hmm.